the top business news now. Brian Quinn is joining us today on the programme. He's starting with a big day for the future of American, sorry, not American, African economies. France paying host to this international summit, uh, Brian, on financing the continent's recovery from coronavirus. Well, Stuart, in terms of overall cases and recorded deaths, Africa so far seems to have fared uh, better than other global regions during the coronavirus pandemic. In terms of the economy, however, it's been one of the hardest hit regions with GDP shrinking by just under 2% and a recovery that's projected to lag well behind the US, Europe and much of Asia. Well, today, Emmanuel Macron is meeting with 15 African and European leaders as well as global financial organizations to discuss how to help African countries bounce back. Solange Mujan and Alexandra Corini have more. A COVID-induced blow to their economies. In 2020, the economic output of African nations was its worst on record. GDP on average decreased by 1.9 percent, a drop that's plunged the continent into a recession for the first time in nearly three decades. Among the most affected nations that depend on tourism, like the Seychelles and Tunisia, another sector that's been hit hard, the fuel industry. With global aviation having dropped to a trickle, the price of petrol dipped greatly affecting export countries like Angola and Nigeria. Nations that rely heavily on exporting raw materials have also struggled, from cotton exports in Benin to the foraging of minerals in South Africa. Its GDP decreased by 7% in 2020. Lockdowns have also taken their toll. Many workers employed on a day-to-day -day basis were suddenly out of work. For many of them, there were no unemployment checks or government help. Job losses and a plethora of other factors have sent poverty jumping across the continent. Increasing by 8 percent, there are now 520 million people in Africa, or some 40 percent of the population, that now live below the extreme poverty line. One of the major challenges many African nations face is colossal debt. Last April, G20 countries, including China, which is Africa's number one creditor, hit the pause button on payments. But now, looking to the future, African nations are seeking ways to lower that debt, to increase foreign investment, and to jumpstart their economies again. Now we've got some bad news for the Japanese economy. It seems to be faring worse than expected, doesn't it? Well, Stuart, Japan's overall economic output contracted by 1.3% in the first three months of the year as the government reinstated restrictions amid a resurgence of COVID-19. The drop due in large part to a fall in private consumption as restaurants and shops reduce their opening hours. Capital expenditure, though, and export growth also slowing sharply. Economists are warning that the contraction is likely to continue in the second quarter after the government has imposed a third state of emergency for critical regions, including Tokyo and Osaka. Let's check in on the markets then. Uh, how are they shaping up today? Well, Asian index is actually seeing some significant gains in Tuesday trade. The Nikkei in Tokyo up over 2% as investors shrug off that macroeconomic data and go bargain hunting after a losing Monday session. The auto sector leading the way there. Toyota's up 2%. Honda up over 3%. Chinese index is a bit more muted with Hong Kong's Hang Seng up around 1.3%. Kospi in Seoul not far behind it at the close. European markets opened higher despite a losing session on Wall Street yesterday. Investors staying optimistic as they wait for new Eurozone GDP data. London's up nearly a full percent at the open. Frankfurt and Paris not too far behind. Now, finally, from uh, Brian for Business, the International Energy Agency was founded uh, in a large part to prevent disruptions in the flow of oil, but it's now taking, well, uh, quite a different tack, isn't it? Indeed, the Paris-based institution was chartered in response to the 1973 oil crisis. It's now responding to a different crisis, that of climate change. The IEA now says energy companies must halt all new oil and gas exploration projects starting this year if humanity is to have a chance of avoiding catastrophic global warming. Its latest report out Tuesday is called Net Zero by 2050. In it, the IEA says the world needs to go from $2 trillion a year in low carbon technology investment up to $5 trillion amid a massive overhaul of energy supply and demand. The report's a significant departure for the traditionally fossil-friendly agency environmental groups hailing it as a milestone. And it is typically a benchmark for policy. We'll see. I think uh, halting all exploration projects this year is yeah. maybe a bit of a bit tall brave, order. But, yeah, needed. I hope Good so. Good to see a change. Brian yeah. Quinn uh, with the Business of France 24.